we're now going to discuss position and orientation. So this is how do we define the orientation of the aircraft relative to the earth? You know, the position and the orientation of that airframe. And uh, we're going to use something called Euler angles. Now, this isn't the only way you can do it. And for those who um, end up taking uh, the flight simulation course, uh, we'll cover some other ways. Um, the One of the more efficient ways to, um, to describe the position of an aircraft is actually by using something called quaternions. Uh, the mathematics of it just works out really beautifully. But, um, but for starters, and actually a lot of the uh, flight dynamics uh, uh, books and, and uh, software is written using Euler angles. Um, and that's partially because it's really intuitive. So we're going to walk through that uh, process here. So what I've drawn on this piece of paper is our uh, Earth fixed coordinate system. Okay, so this is the coordinate system fixed to the Earth. And uh, remember, X is uh, to the north, Y is to the east, and then uh, you could complete that uh, south and west there. And then Z, the Z axis is pointing towards the center of the Earth. And I'm actually going to turn this sideways um, just to help it fit on the screen here a little bit better. Um, and usually when I teach this, uh, this lecture in person, uh, I hand out a piece of paper to everybody and have you make your own paper airplane so you can follow along and move that piece of paper around, you know move your airplane around uh, to try to uh, try to visualize this thing a, a little bit better. But um, today, instead of a paper airplane, um, because I'm doing this on camera, I'm actually going to use a, a model aircraft here. OK, so this is an F-16 model that I have. Uh, so now we're going to start off by talking about orientation first. OK, and, and eventually we'll be able to describe position, but we're going to just talk about orientation. So really, uh, we're going to start by just looking at how this aircraft is oriented relative to the earth fixed uh, coordinate system here all right so remember the x-axis of the aircraft comes out the nose uh, the the y-axis goes out the right wing and then the z-axis is down so we're going to start with those two oriented just the same and uh, and now we're, we're going to apply three angles these are called the Euler angles and uh, we actually have to apply them in a certain order in order to get um, in order to get the proper final orientation. Okay, these three uh, Euler angles are called uh, our azimuth angle, psi. Uh, let me write these down here. So we've got uh, psi is what we use for the azimuth angle. Uh, theta is what we call an elevation angle. And phi is what we call a bank angle. Okay, so this is bank, elevation, and, uh, and as azimuth, all right? Now, I wrote them in this order because our bank angle um, has to do a little bit with the x-axis. We're gonna see that here in a second. The elevation angle has a little bit to do with the y-axis, and the azimuth angle has something to do with the z-axis, okay? So, um, so we usually think of them as bank elevation azimuth, and we usually say phi, theta, psi. These are our three angles, but we have to actually apply them in the opposite order, okay? So we actually apply the azimuth angle first, the elevation angle next, and finally the bank angle. So let's talk about how that would go. The azimuth angle, uh, let's say it's it's gonna be 45 for each of these, okay? so. Uh, so we apply a, a 45 degree azimuth angle by rotating it about the aircraft's Z axis. Now the Z axis of the Earth and the aircraft are the same here. And so uh, anyway, it doesn't matter, but but we're going to rotate that 45 degrees. So so that's uh, the, our azimuth angle. Then we're going to apply an elevation angle of 45 degrees. And an elevation angle, we rotate about the aircraft Y axis. Okay, so we're going to rotate that up by 45 degrees. And then uh, finally, we've got a bank angle that we're going to apply a 45 degree bank angle. We, we apply that about the aircraft's Z axis. So we're gonna rotate that to the right by 45 degrees, okay? So if the aircraft was oriented like this uh, relative to the Earth, uh, let me slide this in here, um, then, uh, then the three Euler angles would be 45, 45, 45, okay? Um, now, if we had applied those in a different order, we would have gotten a different orientation out. So, so we have to remember to apply them in this order. So, uh, so if these were, you know, we would just write down 45, 45, 45, we would have to remember to apply uh, the azimuth first, the elevation next, and 
the bank angle uh, as the last one. Okay, so um, we can also, uh, there are multiple solutions because obviously if you add um, uh, 2 pi or 360 degrees to any of these angles, you get back the same orientation. And so we have to put limits on these in order to make, um, in order to make the solution unique. You know, if I give you three angles, there's only one orientation or, or there's, uh, I, I guess, uh, more importantly in the other direction that for any given orientation, there's only one way to describe it. And we do that by limiting the, uh, the range on each of these uh, angles. So, so our bank angle, we limit, uh, we say that that has to be between minus 180 and uh, positive 180. Okay, so that, so our bank angle is our is uh, about the the x-axis here. So it can go to uh, that that'd be a positive or or a minus 180. Okay, um, and I guess technically one of those should be less than or equal to. So there's not a duplicate at the 180 degrees uh, when it's when it's uh, oriented like this. Um, elevation angle we go from minus 90 to plus 90 okay so that's from a nose down to a nose up uh, okay so that's limited from negative 90 to positive 90 and then azimuth angle we go from 0 to 360 degrees so um, so azimuth angle again is the is the angle around uh, you know starting from the earth fixed coordinate system here it's the rotation to the right around that so uh, in a clockwise fashion so uh, this would be 45 uh, 90 180 270 and then back to 360 okay so um, yeah so these are our three angles these are called the Euler angles now sometimes these are inaccurately called roll pitch and yaw the reason that's not quite accurate is that roll has to do with a motion or a moment of the aircraft about each of its axes and uh, but we can see that actually we can get in a in this orientation. So so we would uh, you know this bank angle of uh, of 90 degrees. Uh, we could actually get in that orientation without rolling the aircraft at all. So let's see how we could do that. So if we start with the aircraft oriented with the fixed Earth uh, coordinate system here, and uh, we we pitched up uh, 90 degrees. And then we yawed to the to the right 90 degrees, and then we pitched the aircraft back down 90 degrees. You can see that I now have a bank angle of 90 degrees, and I never put any roll input into the aircraft. Okay, so so the the important thing to remember here is that these three angles don't tell us how we got in that orientation. So that's why they're not really technically uh, related to roll, pitch, and yaw. Although most commonly, yes, if you wanted to go from zero to, to 90, then you would roll the aircraft, right? But, um, but these angles don't tell us how we got there. They simply tell us the current orientation of the aircraft relative to the earth fixed coordinate system. So I'm gonna put the uh, aircraft in a couple different orientations and then pause for a minute and let you think about what the Euler angle definitions for those uh, orientations would be okay so let's try um, let's try this first I hope you can see how that's oriented I'm gonna try to keep this in increments of 45 degrees okay so uh, in any of these axes so that it's maybe a little bit more obvious but just take a minute and uh, look at the orientation of that aircraft and tell me how you think how you would define the Euler angles for that that orientation Okay, so the first thing we would want to look at is what's the azimuth angle? The azimuth angle is, uh, so it's pointing off between uh, south and east. So that's going to be 100, uh, let's see, 90, 135 degrees, right, along that, that line. So, uh, so we're going to have a, a uh, psi of 135. And then our elevation angle is what's important next, and that was rotated up by uh, 45 degrees so theta equals 45 and then uh, and then the 
the bank angle, it's uh, completely upside down, and so that would be uh, phi equals 180. Okay, so uh, so the way so again we we rotate through the azimuth angle first, so our nose is pointed in the right direction, then we uh, incline it by 45 degrees, and then we bank by 180 degrees. Now again, this doesn't these angles don't tell us how we got there; they just tell us what the current orientation of the aircraft is. Okay, uh, so let's try another one. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's have this in kind of this nose down position pointed to the west. So just take a second and think about how you would define those Euler angles. Okay, so this has, uh, let's see, the nose is pointed directly west, so this is going to be um, psi equals 270. Uh, and then theta, this is nose down at 45 degrees, so theta equals minus 45. And then, uh, and then phi, our bank angle, would be zero, actually. We, we didn't have any bank angle there, okay? So, um, so um, I, I don't know if this was clear before, but theta is, um, well, let's start with, with psi. So the azimuth angle, we start at zero here when it's pointed north, it goes in a clockwise direction around from zero to 360. Uh, the elevation angle, theta, starts at zero when you're, when you're level. And then uh, nose up is 90 degrees, nose down is minus 90. And then the bank uh, is positive to the right, negative to the left. And, uh, and that goes from zero wings level to uh, positive 180 when you're upside down or negative 180 when you're upside down. Um, okay, now there's uh, something interesting. We're going to see this come out in the math here. But uh, let's say that we were pointed directly up or down. Um, if our nose is, is directly down or directly up, our azimuth angle actually, um, or our, our solution here is a little bit singular. There are multiple solutions for this. And uh, uh, because you could um, treat that as a, uh, for example, if we were directly nose up, then that could be an azimuth angle of zero and a, um, and a theta of 90 degrees. Um, it also could have been, uh, an azimuth angle of uh, of uh, of 180, and then a theta of 90 degrees, and a bank angle of uh, of 180. Right. So uh, so when we're nose up or nose down, the solution becomes singular. And actually, there are multiple solutions. Um, but uh, uh, we'll talk about how to handle that in flight simulation. Luckily, that doesn't happen very often when we're just analyzing aircraft. Uh, the way that we're going to be doing it, in, at least for the remainder of this course, where we're just looking at uh, the dynamics of traditional fixed-wing aircraft. And uh, we're going to be looking at small deviations from a current state, um, and uh, we won't be looking at these extreme cases. So let's look at the mathematics now of the Euler angles. Um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, so let's start off with our Earth-fixed coordinate system here. Uh, so x sub f and y sub f, remember this is to the east and this is to the north and z is down towards the center of the earth. And uh, we're going to look at some vector um, in this coordinate system. So we could just put a point on here and say that that has some, um, some x, y, z uh, values. And uh, so we're going to actually call this uh, v, x, f, v, y, f and VZF. Okay, so some vector, that's what the V stands for there, and uh, it's got X, Y, and Z values in the Earth fixed coordinate system. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is rotate this by our, um, if we're going to rotate this vector into the orientation of the aircraft, uh, we need to rotate it first by the, uh, uh, by the azimuth angle psi, okay? So the way we do that is uh, through a rotation matrix. 
And so what we would say, and I'm going to use some, some shorthand here, the capital C is just going to stand for cosine. So it's going to be cosine psi, uh, sine psi, zero, minus sine psi, cosine psi, zero, and zero, zero, one will be our rotation matrix from uh, this uh, VXF, VYF, and VZ. F, so that vector, and uh, that will give it to us in a new, um, in a new coordinate system that has been rotated by psi. Okay, so this is just called a rotation matrix. So we're first going to rotate our vector here by psi, and uh, and notice that z, the z axis here, just has a one, and that means that the z coordinate here is the same as the z coordinate in our new uh, coordinate system, which makes sense because we're rotating about the z-axis here, right? So we're going to rotate um, uh, about that z-axis, which is the same in both of those coordinate systems. So next we're going to rotate whatever we get out of that by another uh, rotation matrix. Uh, so we're going to take that and put it into uh, another vector. And I'm not going to name these vectors because these are just intermediate vectors. Uh, but we're going to rotate that uh, in order to get it into uh, to account for the uh, elevation angle. So the uh, rotation matrix for that is cosine of theta, uh, 0 minus sine of theta, 0, 1, 0, sine of theta, 0, cosine of theta. Okay, so again, this is just a rotation matrix to take it from uh, our, our new uh, coordinate system here through and rotate it now by theta. And again, um, that theta rotation is about the y-axis, so that's why uh, we've got a 0, 1, 0 here. Uh, that means that the y value here is going to be equal to the y value there, so that won't change. That's a rotation about the y-axis. And now we're going to rotate it about the x-axis um, uh, by, uh, by the bank angle. And so the, we're rotating about the x-axis, so that's 1, 0, 0, like that. And then uh, we're rotating by the bank angle. We're going to have a cosine phi, sine phi, minus sine phi, and cosine phi there. So, so this vector will get plugged in there and rotated by phi uh, to get us to our uh, some vector in the body fixed coordinate system. Okay, so... Uh, that's some vector in the body fixed coordinate system and we can get there from so we can take a vector in the earth fixed coordinate system and uh, rotate it three times with these three different rotation matrices in order to get it into the body fixed coordinate system well um, another way to look at this is we can actually smash all three of these rotation matrices together and pre-multiply them so actually we can also write this uh, we could write this as VXB, VYB, and VZB is equal to um, the these three matrices, these three rotation matrices multiplied by uh, that VXF, VYF, VZF. So some vector in the earth fixed coordinate system. And... Uh, uh, the order we would do these in is actually if this is matrix, uh, if this is rotation matrix one, two, and three, then uh, we actually do those in the opposite order down here when we pre-multiply. So it'd be three, two, one. So we'd put those three matrices together. We can actually pre-multiply those symbolically together to get one large matrix now. Uh, so another way to uh, to write this is just going to be one large matrix. It's still three by three, uh, but it's all of these components now that have been multiplied uh, together. And so it's, it's going to be a, a three by three matrix that uh, depends on um, all three Euler angles that will take us from the earth fixed coordinate system into our body fixed uh, coordinate system over here. And we can actually go the other direction as well by using the transpose of this matrix, okay? So um, let me just drop that in here. So I've got uh, a screenshot of what that looks like. Let me just bring it down here. So um, so what we'll get when we uh, pre-multiply all three of those matrices together, so we'll get this matrix here. This is a, a three by three, 
And uh, this will take us, actually, what we worked through up there was going from the earth fixed uh, multiplied by this matrix to the body fix. Um, you can use the transpose of this matrix, though, which is this right there, to go from body fixed to earth fixed. So, uh, so this is how we can get, if we know a vector in one of these coordinate systems or a position or, or something in one of these coordinate systems, we can figure out where that is or how that's oriented in the other coordinate system by using one of these uh, transformation matrices. Okay. Uh, so what are some vectors that we know in one coordinate system that we wish we had in another coordinate system? Well, for example, U, V, and W are in our body fixed coordinate system. So, uh, so that's a, a body fixed vector. And uh, we would like to know if I, and U, V, and W are our local velocity, the velocity of the aircraft relative to the surrounding air, right? So we'd like to know uh, what that velocity looks like in the earth fixed coordinate system. So if I know U, V, and W, and I know my orientation of the aircraft, I can multiply it by this matrix here to figure out what the uh, what that velocity vector looks like in the earth fixed coordinate system. Now, to actually get an x dot, y dot, and z dot, I actually need to add on the velocity of the wind, and here we're assuming that's constant. Um, and, and remember, the velocity of the wind is already in the earth fixed coordinate system. We assume that the wind vector and the earth fixed uh, coordinate system were... Uh, oriented the same at all times, but that the wind uh, coordinate system can move relative to the uh, 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 to the earth fix. So anyway, we just add in those components and that gives us x dot, y dot, and z dot, which are our change in our location on the in the earth fixed uh, Cartesian coordinate system. Now another vector um, that we have in one coordinate system, which we'd like in the other, is uh, is this right here. So uh, we know the weight in the earth fixed coordinate system really well, right there. The weight is just the direction of gravity that's always in the z direction, according to our approximations here of, a, of this flat earth system. So z, uh, so we know the weight is always pointing towards the center of the earth. And now we would like to know what that weight vector looks like in the, uh, in the body fixed coordinate system. So in the earth fixed, it would be um, 0, 0, one or zero zero w where where w is the weight of the aircraft and we can now and that's in the earth fixed coordinate system now we can multiply it by this matrix here to figure out what that vector looks like on the in the body fixed coordinate system and figure out what direction our weight uh, force is acting so if you do that so if you do zero zero w multiplied by this what we get is that the weight in the body fixed coordinate system is uh is equal to this right here so it can have three components depending on what our uh, what our um, elevation angle is, theta, and our bank angle here. Notice that it's independent of psi. Psi is our azimuth angle, so that's uh, the angle that's telling us whether we're flying north or south or east or west or you know what direction on the Earth we're flying. Uh, the weight doesn't care about that. It only cares about the um, the elevation angle and the bank angle. And then these are going to be the three components of weight in our body fixed coordinate system. Now, one more thing that we'd like to know is uh, if I know a rotation rate on the aircraft, or uh, so P, Q, and R, so those are our rotation rates about the X, Y, and Z um, axes of the, uh, of the body fixed coordinate system, um, then we can actually use the Euler angles to figure out what our change in Euler angles are gonna be. So, uh, so we know our rates and our current orientation um, based off of the Euler angles here, then we can figure out what our change in orientation is going to be. Now, that uh, requires a slightly different uh, matrix up here, a different transformation. I'm not gonna walk through that, but, um, but uh, basically this is a pretty important relationship here as well that we can get from the Euler angles that relates our rotation rates on the aircraft to a change in our orientation. And actually, this points out something really important about why Euler angles, or one drawback actually, from uh, Euler angles, and that's this divide by C of theta. You see that in, uh, we've got that in four terms here. Um, so that's in the denominator in this, uh, in this transformation matrix here. And uh, so anytime that goes to zero, we're gonna have a, a problem, right? So when does cosine theta go to zero? 
Well, that happens actually when we are at plus or minus 90 degrees in theta. So that's either nose straight up or nose straight down. So luckily um, for aircraft, for fixed wing aircraft, we don't encounter that very often. And so the Euler angle formulation can be used even in flight simulation uh, for most situations with aircraft. But um, but if you were trying to simulate a rocket, uh, that would be bad news or um, uh, even a stunt aircraft or fighter aircraft, uh, that's not uncommon for them to get into this orientation. And so, uh, like I mentioned previously, the Euler angle formulation is just one formulation for relating uh, a vector in one coordinate system to another coordinate system. And it has some drawbacks, this being one of them. Another one is that it's very computationally expensive, actually. So uh, if, if you know what it takes for a computer to compute a sine or a cosine, and you see how many of these we need to compute up here, uh, sines and cosines actually take a computer a long time. Now, to us, it doesn't take anything. We don't notice the time it requires a computer to to, uh, to perform that operation. But when you're doing this over and over again, uh, that can um, that time sink can actually add up. And, and uh, this is important, uh, well, really more important in flight simulation when you're trying to refresh the state of the aircraft as quickly as possible then uh, computations like this um, take a long time compared to uh, like the quaternion formulation, which we'll learn about in the flight simulation course. Um, that's uh, much faster. So computationally, it's much faster. And it doesn't have this, uh, this problem down here where we have a divide by zero. Now, this problem is actually called gimbal lock. OK, I'll just write that down here. Uh, gimbal lock. and. Um, and uh, you can see that in, um, let me just change color so you can see this, but uh, but this is right here, you know, the, this is this divide by zero. Um, that's what, uh, uh, that's the gimbal lock there. So, so that's one of the drawbacks, but for our purposes in this course, where we're just gonna be studying the, um, for fixed wing aircraft, we're gonna be looking at small deviations relative to some uh, trim flight condition. It turns out that we're not going to be bothered by this gimbal lock situation because we're not going to be trimmed at nose up or, or nose down. So uh, so we're going to stick with this formulation for the remainder of this class and, uh, and now apply these Euler angles along with our equations of motion to come up with a full system of equations that can be solved for the state of the aircraft.